So oh, we're going to look at Paul on the island of Malta. If you remember a couple weeks ago, <laughs> uh, if you can remember back that far, you're doing a lot better than I can. Um, we were talking about Paul, and, and uh, remember the, sh- the ship that he was on, the, 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 the ship that they were going to Rome, uh, going to Italy, on, uh, got buffeted. They, they left at the wrong time of year. The storm was raging on them. They fought the storm for how many days? 14 days they were in this storm. They've already cut everything loose. They, they, well, cut anything. they, they, they actually took ropes and they, they bound the ship together so that it wouldn't break apart. They got rid of everything except for the grain to start with that, that they were hauling. Uh, so that they would make it lighter and hopefully uh, be able to survive. And then, and then they were, well, Paul had told them that, that he got this word from God that, that if everybody stayed on the ship, they would all survive. And, of course, they're looking around like, man, there ain't much left of the ship. <laughs> How are we going to survive? The sailors decided that they were going to let the lifeboats down, and then they were going to sneak off in the lifebo- lifeboats and take off. And when they found out about it, when Paul found out about it, he told the centurion, the centurion told the soldiers, or told the, the sailors, get back up here, because everybody has to stay together. And then they cut the lifeboats loose. It came a point where they knew they were going to run aground. And they did. And the ship started getting bashed and bashed and bashed. And Paul told them they still needed to stay together. Don't kill anybody. Don't let anything happen because the guards were going to kill all the prisoners because for them, if a prisoner escaped, it was their death. And so they were going to kill the prisoners. And again, the centurion stepped in and said, no, we're going to let everybody live. We're all going to survive. And so they told everybody that could swim to get out of the ship first and take, take off and head for the shore. And those that couldn't swim, grab hold of pieces of the wood and, and uh, hopefully make it to shore. And they did. And that's kind of where we pick up today. Chapter 28. And here's the whole catch. God is always with us. Even when things don't seem that way, He's always with us. Sometimes we may not understand what's going on at the time, may not see His presence, but He's always there. Uh, we, 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 we like to, to talk about God causing things. Oh, God caused this death, or God caused this accident. And God caused, he did, no, God didn't cause those things. He's with us. He's there to support us. He's always there. And that's what we're going to see with Paul this morning. So look at this, Acts chapter 28, verse 1. Let's just start there. Once safely on shore, we found out that the island was called Malta. Uh, That's that's actually the modern day name for it. Um, and so um, there's some things about, about Malta that, that we uh, ought to look at here. If you, if you see right there at the very end, that's where Malta's at. Um, not, they, they, they were about uh, 60 miles uh, south of Sicily. Um, Malta, I, I think we're, we're going to see it here in a second, um, 60 miles south of Sicily. Uh, Malta was under, under the province of Sicily by direction of Rome. So Rome, uh, uh, of course, controlled Sicily. Sicily uh, basically uh, uh, had Malta as, as one of its uh, territories. Uh, they didn't really do a whole lot there. As a matter of fact, the, the governor of Sicily appointed a, a ruler for Malta. Um, uh, there were no uh, uh, Greeks there. There were no Romans there. It was just the islanders that were there. Uh, Sicily appointed the island ruler. Uh, population was the, the island natives. And we're going to see that, that this, this becomes a very important part here when, when Paul's talking about uh, the islanders doing this for them because they were considered, the islanders were considered barbarians because they weren't Roman and they weren't Greek. And so they weren't really sure what was going to happen, what these barbarians on this island were going to do. And there was a lot of things that could have happened. You know, they, they, could, have, they could have killed them. They, 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 they could have just uh, 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 taken everything from them, taken them captive. There were a lot of things that natives could have done. And we're going to see what they did here in a sec. The island was very unimportant in world trade. Everybody just kind of bypassed it. Uh, occasionally people, ships would harbor in there for, for this, this time frame uh, of the storms. Uh, but it wasn't there. It wasn't really on the trading routes. It was just a little bitty island, a little speck that nobody wanted to even go to. That's where Paul ends up. Once safely on shore, we found out that the island was called Malta. Paul, in chains, a prisoner, 
and convinces 276 people on board the ship that if they stayed together, they would all survive. Because that's what his God said. And through the help of the centurion, they listened. And they all survived. And they're all on the island of Malta. God provides. God provides. God told Paul, you will not die. I will take care of you. And he did. Wow. Second Corinthians verse one, or chapter 1, verse 8. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles we, we experienced in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired of, of life itself. Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death. Ever felt that way? Man, things are so bad, I, I, can't, I, I can't, I'm sinking, I can't see above the mud, the muck and the mire. I've been there a time or two. Paul says he's been there. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God who raised the dead. Dennis's comments this morning. Huh? We go through those things. We go through those times so that we can rely on God. We can't, sometimes we can't see God until we're all the way down in the hole on our knees. And that's the only way we can see God. And that's what Paul's saying here. This happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God who raises, raised the dead. When I rely on myself, boy, I mess it up terribly. Oh, my goodness. Joni, I don't need any comments. Thank you. But when I rely on God, I'm blown away at what happens. It's just amazing. When I, when I start putting my finger in there, boy, I, I mess it all up. And I start to think, you know, when my boys were used to help me, <laughs> if they were doing it my way, my way meant me doing it. It was getting done the way it was supposed to. When they helped, I had to backtrack. I had to do things. Huh? So when we, when we let God do his thing, it's great. But when we start taking over and trying to do it our way, man, it doesn't work very well. Josh and I were hanging, sighting on the parsonage in Mile City. And since this time, I've, I try to really pick my words carefully. Because he was on one end of the siding, I'm on the other end. I told him to drop it, drop it down to make it level. Well, he drops it all right, just like every kid would. Yeah. And I look at him, and Joni's laughing. Joni is just laughing up a storm. And I couldn't even get mad at that point. I mean, it was no sense to get mad anyhow. <laughs> it's like, Okay, Whew. what would God do? <laughs> we pick it back up. When I say drop it, I just mean drop your end a little bit. So Josh would walk around. He loved wearing carpenter pants because it had the little loop on there for the hammer. I'd be picking up a piece of side and get ready to hammer it, and I can't find the hammer. Where's my hammer at? Where's Josh? Josh is taking off someplace. He's got the hammer right with him. We could have gotten the job done a lot faster. God can get the job done a lot faster without us too. But he wants us to help. But we need to listen and do what he wants us to do. We can't do it on our own. This happens so that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God who raised the dead. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us again and again. And again, when we get in those spots, he delivers us if we trust in him. On him, we have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us as you help us by your prayers. Then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favor granted us in answer to the prayers of many. We need to rely on God we need to rely on the prayers of people. It would be so easy for us not to do the 6 o'clock in the morning thing on Tuesdays and Thursdays. It would be very easy. But that's just a smidgen of what we should be praying. We, our prayers, uh, uh, there, are, there are some people that, 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 that get that 
mm, I got to pray for this person. Some of us don't get that. We don't get it very often. But we go and it together. And we, we take this list that we've got today. We'll bring that up on Tuesday. We'll, we'll pray over that. We'll bring other things in with us and we'll pray over those things too. You know, things change between now and Tuesday morning. And we pray. And we'll pray. And that's just with two, four, six people usually. Just think of all of us were praying the same thing. How many of you gone on their website and checked the prayer, prayer requests lately? Don't, don't raise your hands. Because I can see who's been on the website too. <laughs> and that's why when, when I, I've talked to people about Jolene, well, we didn't know that. Huh. We need to become a praying church. A godly praying church. This town is only 400 and some odd people. There's absolutely no reason why every single person in this town isn't touched by our prayers. I bet between all of us, we probably can come up with all 441 people that live here. And we should. And we should be praying for them by name. If nothing else, we should be praying through by, 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 by block. Well, who, who lives on this block over here? Let's go, let's go pray for those house addresses. Let's go pray for that, that, this door, this door, this door. We need to pray for our town. We're expecting God to do everything. No. He's, he, he'll do it. He's there with us. But he wants us to help. And part of that help is by prayer. We need to be praying for our town. Second Corinthians 1. <laughs> we just did this. We don't want you to be in the dark, friends. Oh, this is the message. I like the way the message put this. Uh, the same, same verses. We don't want you to be in the dark, friends, about how hard it was when all this came down on us in Asia province. It was so bad, we didn't think we were going to make it. We felt like we'd been sent to death row, <laughs> and that was all over for us. As it turned out, it was the best thing that could have happened. Instead of trusting in our own strength or wits to get out of it, we were forced to trust God totally. Not a bad idea since he's the God who raises the dead. <laughs> wow. And he did it. Rescued us from certain doom and he'll do it again. Rescuing us as many times as we need rescuing. Wow. And you and your prayers are part of the rescue operation. I don't want you to be in the dark about that either. I can see your faces even now lifted in praise for God's deliverance of us. A rescue in which your prayers played such a crucial part. That didn't end in Paul's day. It still goes on today. Still goes on today. Our prayers are crucial in the life of this town. Our prayers are crucial in the life of this church. Our prayers are crucial in the, in the life of the fringe people that come occasionally. Our, our prayers are crucial for those that don't come that don't know about it. They're crucial. Isaiah 46, 4. And I'll keep on carrying you when you're old. This is God talking. I'll be there bearing you when you're old and gray. I've done it and I will keep on doing it, carrying you on my back, saving you. God is there I love the thought of him carrying me. Hmm. Jeremiah 1.8 message. Don't be afraid of a soul. Don't be afraid of a person. I'll be right there looking after you. God's decree. God's guarantee. Huh? There's the NIV. Do not be afraid of them. For I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. There is nothing that this world can throw in us that we should be afraid of. Well, there's, there's some things that we'd be concerned about people we might be concerned about but not afraid i think there's a huge difference between concern and being afraid huge difference i'm afraid when Joni drives that's not a concern hmm? no we don't need to be afraid of anything because should i die i'm on the better side in the presence of my god it's a win-win situation, I think. Paul was shipwrecked. But he was saved by God. Hmm. hmm. You ever been shipwrecked? 
maybe physically, mentally, spiritually, God saves you. God can save you. Verse 2. The islanders showed us unusual kindness. They built a fire and welcomed us all because it was raining and cold. The barbarians. The the non-Greeks, the non-Romans. The barbarians welcomed us with kindness. That baffled them. They didn't understand that. The islanders were barbarians, like I said. Uh, They were neither Greek nor Roman. They were isolated on a poor, insignificant island that nobody wanted to go to. They were, they were kind of by themselves, and, and, and as people tried to, tried to avoid it because there was nothing there. Go the other 60 miles and get to Sicily. The islanders could have threatened, uh, felt threatened and, and killed the shipwrecked victims. Here are these guys that are showing up on shore. Let's, 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 let's kill them. Or they could have killed them to rob them. Take whatever valuables they had, which wouldn't have been very much because <laughs> they'd already dumped it in the sea. But yet, the islander showed us unusual kindness. 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 Does that philanthro pain look familiar? That's where we get our word philanthropy. In the Greek, it means love for mankind. The barbarians showed these shipwrecked victims love. Because they were people. Wow. I've known some people that walk across the street when they see somebody else that's not like them. Well, their hair is different. Let me clue you. If you don't like people that aren't like you, don't ever go to Disney World. Oh, my goodness. I saw some really weirdos there. <laughs> Part of them were my family. <laughs> but it's the melting pot. There's people from all over the world that are there. And if somebody's, somebody, somebody, we saw a lady in, 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 the, in, the, in the hotel complex we were in. She, she was, uh, it was the, the, the pavement was wet and she had a child in her hand. They were trying to get in to get something to eat. And she slipped and fell. I mean, I know she was embarrassed. And we could have just walked right by her. We stopped, you know, and asked her if she's okay. You know? Wow, she wasn't like us. She was different than us. Huh? But she's a human being. That's what's like us. She's a child of God, whether she knows it or not. Huh? That's what's like us. And that's what these barbarians were showing to Paul and the other 175 people from that ship. They were showing them kindness. Wow. Paul was marooned and facing island natives, (laughs) but accepted and helped them. Wow. They saw the shipwrecked people. They helped them out. They accepted them. They built a fire for them. They kept them warm. Oh, then it gets interesting. So Paul gets up and he starts gathering a a, 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 a bush wood, brushwood. And as he put it on the fire, a viper, uh, driven out by the heat, fastened itself onto his hand. In other words, it bit him. And when the islanders saw the snake hanging from his hand, they said to each other, this man must be a murderer, for for though he escaped from the sea, the goddess justice has not allowed him to live. But Paul shook the snake off into the fire and suffered no ill effects. Why were they thinking that he might have been a murderer? Paul was what? In chains. <laughs> Paul was captive. Paul was on his way to a trial. Paul was, had, had the centurion and the other guards around him, <laughs> him and the other, other, the other uh, prisoners. And so oh, he must be a really bad prisoner. He must be one a murderer. That's why the snake bit him. Wow. You ever make snap judgments like that? Kind of tend to do it all the time, don't we? We need to start looking at people as being people and not maybe what we see on the outside. Wow. Psalm 91.4, He will cover you with His feathers and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. God 
takes care of us. Like he's taking care of Paul here. I love this verse. I, I want to show you what the message says, and I want to show you, tell you why I just don't like the way the message puts it. Remember this, and we'll, we'll come back and we'll look at this again. It talks about the feathers and the wings. The message says, His huge outstretched arms protect you. Under them you're perfectly safe. His arms fend off all harm. I understand that. I get that. It's strong, powerful arms. But I like the way that the NIV puts it, that he covers you with his feathers, with his wings. When a, when a hen protects its chicks, it takes those chicks and, and, and covers them up. It keeps them warm. It keeps them safe. It keeps them out of the weather. It keeps them protected. They don't see, not, nothing sees them. The hen looks even bigger than what it was originally. Wow. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. I understand the strong arms. But it's kind of hard to hide under somebody's arms. Huh? But when you've got those big wings and those feathers and you're covering up chicks, which I feel like I am a lot of times, just a small, insignificant chick that my God loves so much that he wants to protect me and keep me close to him and keep the weather from me, and keep me warm and safe. And I'll raise those big wings when it gets too hot so that I get air and cool breeze. Wow. There's nothing wrong with the way the message put it, but I like the, weather, or the feather winged better. Paul was snake bitten, <laughs> but healed by God. He was shipwrecked but saved. Uh, uh, islanders found him, uh, but they helped and, 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 and aided them uh, and, 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 and built fire for them. He was bitten by the snake, bitten by the viper, which is an extremely poisonous uh, snake, and yet he was healed. And the people expected him to swell up or, or to suddenly fall dead. But after waiting a long time and seeing nothing unusual happen to him, they changed their minds and said he was a god. <laughs> there, was, <laughs> there was an estate nearby that belonged to Publis the chief official of the island, and he welcomed us into his home and showed us generous hospitality for three days. It's, it's, it's guessed that he welcomed all 276 people into his home. Wow. And took care of them for three days, seeing that most of them, or quite a few of them, were in chains. Huh? He went out of his way. His father was sick in bed, suffering from fever and dysentery. And Paul went in to see him, and after a prayer, placed his hands on him and healed him. And when he had, this had happened, the rest of the sick on the island came and were cured. So do not be, Second Timothy. So let's back up, uh, talking about being rescued and cured, uh, being, being brought to him. Now they've changed their mind and said he's not a murderer, but that he must be a god. And do we know how Paul answers people when they do that? Doesn't he evangelize and tell them about Jesus? Wow. Second Timothy 1 8. Do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join with me in, in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. Do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord. Do not be ashamed about the testimony of our Lord. When we tell somebody about Jesus Christ and they reject, they're not rejecting us, they're rejecting him. And yet we take offense and we clam up and we don't say anything more. But if it was Jesus, what do you think Jesus would do? He'd keep doing it. He'd keep doing it. He'd keep doing it. We need to keep doing it. We need to stop being ashamed of what our Jesus has done and let people know. We need to proclaim it loud and strong. Paul faced superstition and heathenism. He, <laughs> yes, he did. Heathenism. The people first thought he was a, was a murderer. Now they think he's a god. He faced that, and what did he do? He was given the opportunity for evangelism. You ever get an opportunity to tell the gospel and refuse to do it? Hmm. we're getting close to the end verse 10 they honored us in many ways and when we were ready to sail they furnished us with supplies we needed 
And after three months, we put out to sea in a ship that we had, had went weathered, wintered in the island. It was an Alexandrian ship with the figurehead of the twin gods, Castor and Pollux. Uh, if I remember right, these were the sons of Jupiter. And, and they, were, they, were, they were gods of, uh, uh, of uh, transport and, and merchandise and that type, that type of stuff. And so those are the twin heads that were on the ship. And we, put in, in, and we put in at Syracuse and stayed there three days. So Paul was destitute and he was stranded on Malta. Uh, and yet he had the necessities to meet. Uh, his, his necessities were met. They provided for him. And when they got ready to leave, the islanders still provided for them and gave them the necessary things to leave there. From there we set sail and arrived at Ringham. And the next day the south wind came up and on the following day we reached why well, I know I can't say this this morning. Petaleo, pet, pet, a, o, I said it about five different times. Ways. Uh, so, so, and there we found some brothers and sisters who invited us to spend a week with them. And so we came to Rome. And the brothers and sisters there had heard that we were coming, and they traveled as far as for, uh, as far as the Forum of Appius and the three taverns to meet us. At the sight of these people, Paul thanked God and was encouraged. Paul had spent how many days, weeks, telling people about God and, 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 and telling them to stay together and to, and to keep together and that God was going to provide for them and get them to their final destination. And you can tell people and tell people and tell people and it wears you down. That doesn't mean that he lost his faith. Paul never lost his faith. But he, he needed some encouragement. He needed other Christians to be there with him. He just spent, spent all this time on the island and proclaiming the gospel and evangelizing. But he needed, needed Christians that were there. And the Christians here heard that he was coming. And so part of them walked 30 miles. The other part walked 40 miles just to be there when Paul got there. And when Paul saw fellow Christians, his spirit was boosted. And he was encouraged. And you can press on. Sometimes we don't think that our presence being in church is that important. Your presence being in church is extremely important. Not for me, not for the numbers, not for the district. I don't care about any of that stuff. It's important in, in, in the fact that, that when we see people, we smile. I mean, I, I may, not, may not smile at Jordan. Yeah, maybe Jordan, I, I'm not smiling at you today. But, but then I see Alex, and I go, oh, hey. The next time I look, hey, Jordan, how you doing? Hey, there's things that, that, that change your attitude. You know, there was times with the boys, man, alive. If you're, willing with, if you're dealing with kids trying to get to church, sometimes that's a pain. Three boys. Now I laugh when they talk about them trying to get to church on time. <laughs> But when I got there, I'd see people smile. And they start talking about things. And I'd forget all about what had happened 10 minutes earlier. Until Josh started up again. But, <laughs> but you, you, we rely on, on the, everybody else to, to, to encourage. It's a body. If the arm's not here, we're only half functioning. We don't want the brain to be gone that day. Huh? The sight of these people, Paul thanked God and was encouraged. I get excited when I see people. I get excited uh, when, 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 when we're full, not because of the numbers, but because of the smiles on people's faces. And, and, and sometimes, you, know, you, sometimes you, 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 get, you get those looks like, what in the world is he talking about? And then, and then all of a sudden it's like, bing, that light goes on. It's like, oh, I get it. I need that. That's my encouragement. Huh? Or, or we, we've talked about when people say amen to something that's actually good. <laughs> that's like saying sick them to a bulldog. huh? Preacher starts getting fired up. They start doing things. Everyone needs the encouragement of one another. And when you're not here, where's the encouragement? Well, you can worship outside. I know that. You can worship God wherever you're at. And you should worship God wherever you're at. But it's the coming together and we start worshiping, and we start looking. We, we, that's why it's so hard for Joni and I to get out of here by 1 o'clock on a Sunday afternoon. Because everybody hangs around and talks. That's the purpose of the church, is to hang around and talk. 
We're supposed to encourage one another. We lift, you just saw everybody yesterday at the fair. But yeah, we'll sit and talk for an hour. That's awesome. That's the good stuff. That's the way it's supposed to be. If everybody ran out of here as soon as we got done, we've missed the boat. Something's wrong. You hear me? Because we're not fellowshipping. We're not doing the things that we're supposed to be doing. We're not living with one another. We're not part of the body. We're just different specks that are living our own lives. Wow. Paul was apprehensive and lonely. But God encouraged him and strengthened him by sending fellow believers in to lift him up. Wow. And when you show up on a Sunday, even sometimes when it, you, sh- you feel like you shouldn't, when you show up on a Sunday or a Wednesday or whatever day that it is, you encourage people. You encourage people. I get, I get encouraged on Tuesdays and Thursdays when I go pick Gary up. I like seeing him. Yeah, he opens the door. Hey, brother, what's happening? I, I, I like that. That's, that's cool. It's, you know, 5.30 in the morning. I don't get a whole lot of that from anybody else. You know? so, but, but Gary will do that. He's, he's awake. He's alive. He's, he's with it. Sometimes he's, he's eye enemy before I even get there, you know? And, and, and that, those are the things that we need to do with one another. We need to encourage one another as we wait for the day of the Lord. Huh? Paul was encouraged. Paul was, was, was feeling uh, kind of wore out and, and down, and, and yet the brothers and sisters traveled 30 and 40 miles just to be with him, and it lifted him up. And he was on fire again, as we're going to see next week. Huh? I have absolutely no idea what that means. That may, that may have been one of Dennis's slides, and I didn't get taken off of there. So... <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so we're not doing communion, but and I told you a couple weeks ago that I was going to take that song off uh, that uh, um, if you died tonight. But Dennis wanted it left on for the week that he was there. I'm going to leave it on till till, till October um, because I, it has such a powerful meaning. And uh, pay attention: if you died tonight, do you know where your soul would be? Have you accepted Jesus Christ? Have you been baptized? Have you have, have you have you, you, you you prayed the sinner's prayer? Have 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 you made amends with God? I would hate for anybody to leave this building today that has not done that. And something should happen. Because then I've not done my job, my part, in proclaiming the gospel. God is there to help us in every situation. There is absolutely nothing in your life that God cannot help you with. Wow. I claim that. I claim that. And so this morning, well, I want to get that invitation again. Anybody who wants, that, that needs to accept Jesus Christ, that has accept Jesus Christ and needs to make that public, uh, as you come during this song, and it's, it's not a very long song, a very, very short, but powerful words. If you died tonight, where would you be? Where would your soul spend eternity?